Let's talk about intensity effects. I'm once again going to break these up by system, but I'm going to do it a little differently because I have a couple more fixture types in play here. I'm going to break this up by my spots, my beams, my washes, and then I also have my LED uh, faced strobe lights and my ACL bars. So I only have these five faders to devote to that, but I don't want to leave my LEDs and my ACLs out of my intensity effects. So I'm not going to, I don't have room to call out those floor spots and those floor beams like I did for my focus effects. So let's go ahead and just build one intensity Q stack together. Once again, I'm going to just create the stack that I want to make. So Q6 slash 1 through through 4. Again, I'm choosing Q list 6 because it is going on the sixth fader on page 1. Last is going to select my first uh, Q in the stack here. I'm going to grab all of my aerial spots, and I'm going to do that by subtracting my floor group from my all spots group. And then I want to once again offset this random. There are ways to, on the fly, change your grouping um, and change uh, a lot of the selection order stuff with effects, but those involve macros, and we're not getting into that at this point. We just want something very basic um, that we can get up and running with quickly. So I've selected that, that aerial group, I've offset it using random, and I'm now going to apply effect 1. I now want to grab my floor spots, offset those random, and I am going to apply effect 1.2. So I have in my standard effects, if we look at my list, I actually have three versions of each type of this effect, uh, in case I have three groupings of lights. The first one, the first instance, in this case effect 1, is my cosine, which is below the line. Again, I like using below the line effects, because remember that center line is your background state. It's where your lights currently are. So if these lights have no value, I don't want them to pop on. I want these effects to possibly be running, but not show up on stage until I raise the handle. So by making these effects below the line, I can guarantee that I'm not going to see them uh, until I raise that handle, because they're going to take me from wherever my background state is to below my background state. And of course, that is reliant on my scale. I just leave my scale to 100 so that I know that if I run this fader up to full, uh, it's going to go from full to zero. Uh, I can, if I want to, then put scale on, my, scale on a handle, and I can make that be a little more of a flood, uh, subtle flutter or a little more of a dramatic uh, chase. So I just copy that to my 1.2 and 1.3 so that I can use different selection groupings of the same effect running out of the same handle. Otherwise, it's going to lump all those, it's going to lump everything out of the same cue list into one grouping, and then it's just not going to run as we would expect. I've also set the cycle time on all of these to 5, which uh, in EOS is, a, is equivalent to about 60 BPM. And this is going to allow me to later on write macros that correspond my global effects rate for my intensity to various BPMs, because I can do math based on that to figure out the percentage of that global fader that I need. All right, so let's go back into Q6 slash 1, and I have applied my effect 1 and effect 1.2. Uh, floor spots, offset random, effect 1.2. I'm reapplying that effect because I want to leverage that label there. It pulls the label from cosine. I'm actually just going to call this sine because I always think of these as sine wave effects, even though they're technically cosines. I'm going to go into the next, and I'm just going to do the same thing for the next type of effect. All spots, minus floor spots, offset random, effect 2. I'm going to grab my floor spots, offset random, effect 2.2, .2. label, and this is my step effect. And I'm just going to do the same thing for the other cues. Now, by my rule of doing things more than once, I would, I would probably want to work in a macro somewhere here. And typically, I do have an offset random macro um, that I would, I would recommend employing in this case. Um, so maybe I'll, I'll record one while I'm here. So I have my selection, and I want to put this on macro 13, earning macro 13. Now I just say offset random, and I stop learning. So I've randomized that selection, 
I want to place effect 3. And I want to get my floor spots, offset random, effect 3.2. And again, I know that the second instance of all these effects is 0.2. So it's, again, that labeling convention really coming into play. This is a ramp effect, so I'm just going to let the label auto-populate there. And finally, for the last one, I'm going to get my, minus my floor spots, randomize that selection again, effect 4 my floor spots, also random, effect 4.2, and let it automatically label that for me. Then I just want to make sure I label the list, q6 slash label. And I want to call this spot int fx. And I'm just going to put this on that fader, q6 slash. And now I've got that on this handle. Let's talk about how I set up this handle. I'm going to open my properties. And I want to go ahead and again, I want, I'm going to map this to, um, to effect size, right? And effect size is going to let me go from that very subtle flutter to a very big ramp. So if we were going to run this, for example, we can see that I'm running it here and it's kind of this very subtle, I can speed it up a little bit with my global effects master. It's kind of got this very subtle shimmer to it, or it's completely taking the lights out. So now I have one handle that is controlling my speed of all of my intensity effects, which is my global effects rate master. And then I can determine what kind of effect this is by adjusting the scale on that effect itself. I just want to make sure that my top button is set to release. Um, I'm setting this priority once again to 5, as all of my effects lists are set to 5. Make sure Phantom is set to on, wrap, make sure that it's stop mode is set to release, and just for good measure, I'm going to filter this to group 1. One reason I like on my effects setting all of my top bump buttons to release, if I have a whole bunch of stuff going on, and things are getting really crazy, and I just need to stop it, I can just really quickly grab it and run my finger along all those buttons, and it's just going to turn off all of those types of effects. It's just a really quick way for me to make sure just like I shut all of that down. And of course, I want to make sure that I write that as well for things like my ACL bars, because then I can run this and I can get this chase on my odds or my evens, depending on what I have up. So it allows me to have a variety of different looks in a very condensed amount of space.